Hello friends, welcome to part 10 of this tutorial series. In this part, we will be working on the user authentication section. So to begin with, we need to issue a JWT token once the user is successfully authenticated using the password and username. So to tell that, uh, to, to tell NestJS that we want to use JWT, we need to import the module here the JWT module and we need to tell Passport that we need to we want to uh, use uh, JWT so let me check here whether we have the Passport package or not we don't have Passport let's import it quickly so let's install it I'm sorry Passport that's the main package here, okay. And uh, also have uh, NestJS passport. Let's see NestJS passport express. We don't have Nest passport, right? Uh, let's install it. npm install at the red NestJS bash passport. That's the a NestJS version of Passport. It's, a, it's an abs abstraction on top of the Passport package. Give it a minute to install. Once that is done, you can simply go to our auth module file and type in passport module dot register. And this is imported from your NestJS Passport package. Okay, and in the options. We will simply say the default strategy will be oops JWT. Okay, that's it. Save it here. Now let's work on the auth service. So we have a registration method here and also have async login user. Again, this will take the DTO. So we'll create a new one. Although I can use it, use the same one because the Content will be same, but I will create a new one. So user login DTO. Export a class and this will be username string and the password string. Both should not be empty. Okay. That's it. Let's do it. Uh, mm -hmm. here let's give it a type we want the user login DTO of type user login DTO once we get that let's first log it to the console and this method will be called from a controller which is my auth controller I'm gonna close all these other files here so this is again a post endpoint and the endpoint name will be login uh, sign in. Again, I'll give the name as sign in, and I'll receive the content from the body, and I'll also use the validation pipe here. Validate my input. Say login DTO and user login DTO. So return this dot auth service dot login user and login D. Set so now we're returning the login DT itself. So let's save the changes, check our console here, no errors. Go to here and I'm gonna copy it. And this will be login. And I'm still using that variable here. I'm going to save the request to login. Now, in the body, I'll go to form and type username form with a blank password. Okay, it says cannot get. Oh, I'm sorry, it should be post, right? Then password should not be empty. Now if I type the password one two three four five six, 
I get it because it is not yet validating my password, but I see in the console that I'm receiving the data. Now, the first thing I need to do is validate the password. Okay, I can validate it here manually or create a method. So let's do that first. I'll simply extract the username and password from my user login DTO using destructuring as we know. Now uh, we also need we have precrypt imported here. So we need the salt. Okay. So we first need to get the user from the database. So we'll use the repo, find one. The condition is username, username. So we'll find the user with this username. If the user is found, then we'll do something. And if it's not found, we'll throw new unauthorized exception invalid credentials. Don't want to. We don't want the user to know whether he entered a wrong username or a wrong password so that he cannot do a brute force attack. Now, if the user, user is found, we want to store the salt in the user.salt property. And this we need to await for sure because this is a, I mean, this returns a promise. Okay. And once that is done, will check uh, uh, verified is password match how the way we do it is await um, this or oh, sorry not this pcrypt dot compare string is my password now receiving and the hash hash will be my User dot password. Okay. So if there is a match, I'll say return message login successful, or else I'm going to throw the same exception here. Copy. Paste. Okay, let's see. Now I check the console first. There are no errors. Good. Go back to Postman and hit send. Invalid credentials. Okay, I know that user is valid because the user is there. And I don't want the uh, attacker to know whether the username is correct or the password is correct or I mean wrong. Now I go and type the correct password animal at the red one to login successful because the hashes match. Perfect. So, uh, but now we are not getting a JWT token. We want to issue a JWT token. And for that, we need to, uh, instead of returning this, we'll simply, uh, Generate a JWT. We will first create a payload, or let's say name, name is JWT payload. What do you want to send? We want to send the username, and that's it. Okay. We don't want to send anything else. So this payload will be used to create a new token. So new token or JWT token equals to await and to uh, generate the token we need to in inject a service that is given to us by nestjs it's the JWT service JWT service and as you can see it's imported from nestjs JWT package okay I'll simply use this package here the service here this.jwt and we'll use sign async. So it needs a payload, will be JWT payload and options. Let's see what do we have. We have expired sin. This will be one day. Although you don't need to set it because you have it globally, 
algorithm but i'll still do it here hs512 and you don't need anything else okay anything else nothing else that's it and uh, after you do this you simply return token as jwt token save the changes now let's see the console there are no errors go back to your browser or your postman application and hit send you get a jwt token and if you want to check what's inside it you can simply copy the content go to the browser and simply type jwtio and paste your encoded token here you see on the right hand side the decoded version we are getting the username as tom nothing else and this is how you issue a jwt token to the front end user who is getting authenticated and one more thing i mean you can uh, define all these logic for validating a password and everything in your entity as well or okay so i can show you that but i'm not going to use it here so i can go to my user entity user entity i can define a function here or uh, uh, async function uh, compare passwords or let's say verify password okay so here we need to import the big rip package like this uh, not in the dt of course uh, entity package and here we'll simply say hash equals to await bcrypt dot compare so i'll get i'll expect the parameter here that will be my password in the form of string so i'll use password here and this dot salt Or I'm sorry, I'll not use the compare, I'll use the hash method here to generate a new hash. Now simply return this hash, this new hash equals to uh, this dot password. If this is equal to this password, so if we use the same salt, we will always always get the same password. Okay. You can either do this or you can simply uh, this will also work or what we did here. Uh, in the auth service, yeah, you can also compare. Okay, and also you return this. You can go here, entity, simply return, compare password and uh, this dot password. Okay, let's see if this works or not. I'll simply comment this out. So verify password. How do you use it? You go here in the controller. Oh, in the service. Sorry. You get a password here. Okay. Now you do user dot verify password, and you keep the password. So if this matches, we'll get a response. If not, then again it will fail. Let's see that. I gave a wrong password. still gives me the token is wrong of course and okay so this is not working cannot compare this Look. comment this out and let's see if this works one two three D. No, oh, it still doesn't work like this. Validate password. It's not. Uh, doing it correctly. Well, never mind. Let's comment this out, and we'll stick to our service for the time being.
Okay, compare compare the hashes here. Go back. Wrong password. This works. Now I now I get a okay. Tom's this doesn't doesn't work. Okay, perfect. So my authentication is working. I'm getting a token back which I can use in the front end. But, but yes, you can always define your functions here and you can call them on your on the instance of your actual entity so user is my entity so i can call it there if i like but never mind this, this this is not working for some reason we'll check that later but as of now uh, we'll stick to this our login uh, route is completed and the next uh, part we will see uh, let's say how to guard the routes yeah how to guard these to do's using the auth card okay so till then please like comment and subscribe to my channel if you have any suggestions please put that in the co comment section below and i'll see you in the next video thank you and have a wonderful day bye bye